The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Petfish Transmigration Chapter 105 The Emperor was right before them. It wasn't convenient for Jing Wang to ask Li Yu here. Therefore, he temporarily placed this matter aside. The Emperor was extremely delighted to see Da Bao. Li Yu had expected this. Crossing gazes with Jing Wang, he carried Er Bao and San Bao over as well. The emperor saw the other two little fatties and was ecstatic with joy. Erbao and Sanbao didn't have reservations like Dobao. Seeing their grandpa, they both opened their mouths and called out. Plenty of drool immediately flowed out of their mouths. Erbao pointed at the dragon on the emperor's clothes and clapped his hands with a smile. He seemed to have seen this before. Erbao, ah! Snake! His voice was clear and loud. One can tell by listening that he was very healthy. The emperor rubbed the head of this little fatty, pleasantly surprised. Not to be outdone, San Bao used an even louder voice to yell back. Ah! It's a centipede. The emperor also rubbed the head of this fatty happily. De Bao sulked by himself. Er Bao and San Bao were both idiots. This was a dragon. Fish Dad told him before that the long thing on Grandpa's clothes was a dragon. Stop arguing and listen to me. As soon as Da Bao opened his mouth, Drool scrambled outward. Da Bao. Da Bao thought, since he had already made an embarrassment of himself, he might as well. With a reddened, stifled face, he said softly, Yeah. When Da Bao heard his own voice, even he wanted to cover his face. What's going on? Before he was the first fish who managed to say daddy clearly. How come right now he couldn't even say yeah yeah properly? Being a human was too hard. He really wished he were still a fish. The emperor. The emperor already heard him and said teasingly, Kyer, what did you want to say? Da Bao did his best, squeezing his soft claws and continued to say, yeah, yeah. The emperor thought he heard wrong. Li Yu confirmed with a smile, Imperial father-in-law, he's calling your majesty. Please forgive this one. Back at home, in the west frontier, this one always referred to his majesty as Ye Ye to him. The emperor has never been called Ye Ye by any of his other grandsons before. They all properly and seriously referred to him as Imperial Grandfather. Hearing the little air of Jing Wang suddenly calling him Ye Ye, although a bit stutteringly and not very articulately, the emperor was still so happy his beard almost raised in delight. This child was only about ten months old and he could already say Grandpa. In the future, he will definitely be a smart child. Not to mention, he was his grandson anyways. He should be calling him Grandpa. Wasn't it like this in ordinary families? It must be known that although the emperor had the highest status, in his heart, he also longed for the simplest delights of family life. The royal family had a saying, coddle the grandson, don't coddle the son. The emperor had missed Jing Wang for several months. Now that Jing Wang has finally returned, the emperor at most gave him a few words of encouragement but he couldn't be too affectionate. But the little imperial grandsons were different. Being separated by a generation, the emperor could carry him however he wanted. Now that he had a grandson, the emperor couldn't be bothered to look at his son. He raised his hand and picked up Da Bao. Luo Ruiz Hung and Jing Wang hurriedly helped the emperor up. Da Bao was well taken care of and had some weight on his body. The emperor had to exert some strength to hold Da Bao firmly. After catching his breath, he turned around and smiled at Jing Wang. This little fatty sure is heavy. Jing Wang. The emperor held Da Bao in his arms. Da Bao was well behaved. He didn't cry or made fuss. His little chubby arms wrapped around the emperor's neck. The grandfather and grandson were very intimate together. Li Yu was afraid that the emperor would get tired so he wanted to take Da Bao back. 
yet the emperor shook his head. Although Da Bao was indeed somewhat heavy, the emperor was very pleased that Da Bao wasn't afraid of him at all. After all, when the other royal grandsons saw him, they were like mice in the presence of a cat. Which of them were as considerate and affectionate as Jing Wang's son? Not only did the emperor not allow people to take Da Bao away, he even beckoned at Li Yu. Li Yu understood and carried Er Bao and San Bao over as well. The emperor made Luo Ruiz Hung carry the boys and place them on his knees respectively. Imperial father-in-law, this is too heavy. Li Yu was a bit embarrassed. Right now, the emperor felt very playful. He shushed softly, let them sit with me for a while. I'm holding Kair and not holding them. They're about to be unhappy. Jing Wang. Li Yu was speechless. How come he didn't see any signs of unhappiness from the babies? Was the emperor forcibly adding drama here? Where's hunger? The emperor counted the little butts in his arms and confirmed that there was one missing. Si Bao was currently sleeping soundly in Jing Wang's arms. Traveling from the west frontier to the imperial city, Si Bao was exhausted. This fish baby had a very good habit. When he slept, not even thunder could wake him. He didn't even wake up when Jing Wang gave his salutations to the emperor. Under the emperor's insistent urging, Jing Wang also carried this fish baby over and placed him into the emperor's arms. The soundly asleep fish baby received his big brother's enthusiastic welcome. Er Bao and San Bao waved their arms and legs and patted Si Bao awake. Si Bao sat up, rubbed his eyes, and looked at the emperor who was holding him. Who is this? Si Bao put his hand in his mouth and recalled for a moment. Fish Dad seemed to have said that he was going to bring them to see Grandpa. Si Bao got drowsy so he took a nap first. So, was this Grandpa? Ah. Uh, yeah yeah. In his rush to called out, Si Bao's saliva sprayed outward. He even choked himself briefly. The Emperor suppressed his laugh so hard he almost gave himself internal injury. As soon as this child opened his eyes, the Emperor could tell that he was very much like Li Yu. If the Emperor had even the slightest doubt about Li Yu bearing children before, it was all gone now that he saw these boys. Children resemble their parents. This was a law unchanged throughout the ages. The Emperor originally had a stomach full of words to say to Jing Wang. However, after they brought the children over, the emperor got so happy he forgot about everything else and only concerned himself with playing with these four babies. After Luo Ruiz Hung hinted several times, the emperor finally remembered that Jing Wang and his family came to see him immediately after returning to the imperial city. Both Jing Wang and Li Yu had a face of exhaustion under close examination. The emperor comforted them with a few words and let them return home to rest. He wanted to keep the babies behind for a bit but there was no appropriate place to settle boys this small anywhere in his enormous grand palace. Furthermore, the children also just came from a bumpy journey with the adults and must be tired as well. The emperor had no reason to keep them longer and said with a smile, I'm giving you three days to rest. After three days, enter the palace and burn some incense for your mother. Let her spirit in heaven also take a look at her grandsons, I think, she definitely will be very happy. As the emperor spoke and looked over at Jing Wang's entire family, he actually sounded somewhat choked up with emotions. If Empress Yao Hui were still here, if the first prince and fourth prince hadn't died, then with the addition of Jing Wang. If the first prince and fourth prince lived until today, they definitely would have had their own children by now. How nice would that have been? You can leave. The emperor's smile dimmed somewhat. Jing Wang nodded his head and brought Li Yu and the boys away. After exiting the palace, Jing Wang patted Li Yu's hand. In the end, the emperor's facial expression didn't look very good. He was afraid Li Yu would misunderstand. I know. I didn't misunderstand. Li Yu said softly. The emperor was clearly feeling sorrowful after mentioning Empress Yao Hui. Tian Shi, don't feel sad yourself. Gentle dry hands clasped Jing Wang's palm in return. Jing Wang looked at Li Yu, 
feeling like a warm stream was washing clean his heart slowly. Xiao Yu often asked him not to feel sad. Actually, he had long been used to this. How could he feel sad? However, every time Xiao Yu coaxed him and cared for him, Jing Wang would feel an incomparable happiness. He lowered his head. The boys in his arms were all sleeping. Si Bao flipped over and smeared drool all over his father Jing Wang. It was already very late when they returned to the Jing estate. Wang Shi had already ordered people to get the room cleaned. The bed was all prepared. The general state of the room was the same as when they left. There was a new painting of a group of koi drawn by Jing Wang hanging on the wall, which indicated that the master of the house had returned. Jing Wang just settled down with the children and the ducks. In a blink of an eye, Li Yu already slumped over and fell asleep on the bed. He had his head buried in a grass green blanket with gold trimmings. Breathing steadily, he didn't even take off the shoes that he was wearing. It was clear how exhausted he was. Jing Wang felt bad for him. Thinking for a moment, he exited briefly and then returned carrying a warm basin of water. Gently and quietly, he helped Li Yu take off his shoes and socks and soaked his feet in the water. On their way back from the west frontier, other than staying in inns occasionally, the rest of the time wasn't very relaxing. Xiao Yu must have been tired. For a Karpiao to follow him and travel around all over on land, it must have been hard. Jing Wang helped Li Yu wash his feet, gently rubbing the solace of his feet. Li Yu was so comfortable he hummed non-stop but even like this, he still didn't wake up. Jing Wang helped him wipe his feet dry. Taking off his outer robe afterwards, he placed Li Yu into the blanket. Then, Jing Wang undressed and also climbed in. Li Yu haven't slept peacefully in a bed for a long time, he completely lost sense of time. Right now he could maintain his transformation for 24 hours. For the sake of convenience, he often changed exactly at midnight so that he could last until the midnight of the next day. He only needed to return to a fish for a mere moment before changing back to human again. Although this was still a bit troublesome, normally he and Jing Wang would be together at midnight. Under Jing Wang's protection, no slip-ups would occur. Therefore, normally he didn't need to worry about suddenly exposing his secret. When Li Yu woke up from his sleep, he subconsciously patted himself. He still had hands and feet, and didn't change back into a fish. From this, he deduced that today wasn't over yet. Jing Wang was laying right next to him, eyes closed, as if sleeping, motionless. Li Yu flipped over and kicked the blanket. Before he fell asleep, he had felt his feet hurting quite a bit. Now, they were no longer uncomfortable. They felt so fine that if he had to visit the Imperial Palace a few more times, it would be okay. Did a nap also cure foot soreness? Li Yu looked at his own feet, astutely discovering that his socks and shoes had been taken off. Then he got a glance of the bronze basin placed on the floor. Naturally he realized that his feet stopped hurting not because he had a nap. Instead, it was because someone had soaked his feet for him. To be so thoughtful and considerate, other than Jing Wang, who else could it have been? Li Yu laid back down, face pressing against the other's sturdy back, smelling his familiar scent. Li Yu said probingly, Tian Chi. He just called, Jing Wang immediately turned around and looked at him with deep, black pool-like eyes. Li Yu patted himself on the chest, you scared me. Still not sleeping. Jing Wang nodded his head. Why he hasn't slept, wasn't it because of this fish? Because of the little fatty. Jing Wang heard from the Honorable Master Liao Kong before that Li Yu once saved him when he fell into the water when he was young. Jing Wang himself had a high fever after that incident and couldn't remember much afterwards. However, he believed Liao Kong's words wholeheartedly. Xiao Yu came for his sake. Although Xiao Yu never mentioned it before and never admitted it. However, now it could be said that he found the evidence. Because Xiao Yu only mumbled about the little fatty accidentally in his dreams, Jing Wang had bitterly searched for this person and even drank a bunch of vinegar. However, 
he still didn't manage to find them. Yet now he surprisingly learned from the emperor that in his youth, the little fatty was actually his nickname. Jing Wang suddenly had a clear thought. No wonder he couldn't find the little fatty this entire time because the little fatty was actually himself. However, it was normal for the emperor, Wang Shi, and even Ye Ching Huan to know about the little fatty. Where did Xiao Yu learn it of the nickname? It was definitely because Xiao Yu once saw him in his youth. His life was saved by Xiao Yu. Learning that the love rival little fatty who he had searched bitterly for was actually himself, Jing Wang's happy mood reached a peak. If he had a tail, his highness would probably also be wagging it. However, Xiao Yu was completely unaware that he had been searching for the little fatty this entire time. Therefore, there was no way Jing Wang could express this internal joy. Xiao Yu once made him promise not to ask about his whereabouts. To refuse to admit that he had once saved Jing Wang, Xiao Yu must have some unspeakable reasons preventing him to do so. Then he will just keep Xiao Yu in the dark and not let him know that the little fatty already knew everything. Tian Qi eyes bright and shiny, Li Yu called him again with a soft and sweet tone. Jing Wang flipped around and kissed his lips, interlocking their fingers tightly together. The next day, Li Yu even walked with a somewhat stiff posture. Different from the soreness of his feet yesterday, this time it was his legs that were really sore. End chapter The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Pet Fish Transmigration Chapter 106 Jing Wang and Li Yu just returned to the Jing estate. The following morning, Ye Ching Huan had already heard of it and arrived in person to announce his good news. The princess of Jinju had given birth to a daughter two months earlier. Ye Ching Huan was practically stupid from delight. Because Jing Wang and his entourage were on the road, communication was hard and thus had only received this news at this time. Ye Ching Huan, who now had a daughter, was like a little honeybee and buzzed around non-stop, she really is so tiny. Her face isn't even as big as my palm, but so cute. I... I have never seen such an adorable girl before. Jing Wang thought he was noisy but who let this be the first time Ye Shizi became a dad, and with a baby girl, too. Even if Jing Wang ordered people to drag him outside, he still needed to flaunt. Actually, Jing Wang was no better. He hatched the fish eggs himself. That day when the little tiny fishes hatched, his lips curved upward for an entire day and was not any calmer than Ye Shizi. Li Yu, who knew of this truth, laughed uproariously. Who was the silliest father, Jing Wang or Ye Shizi, there didn't seem to be a victor here. However, a baby girl. Li Yu had only interacted with fish sons. When he thought about a cute, adorable, well-behaved, flower-like little girl, he actually felt a bit tempted. He couldn't resist touching his flat stomach. Giving birth to the fish eggs was already something that happened a year ago. Because he gave birth in fish form, it pretty much didn't affect his body at all. After that, he did it with Jing Wan countless times. Although the one shot into the soul was gone, the system said that he could become pregnant normally. In other words, he could still continue to give birth. However, it's already been one year and yet he still hasn't become pregnant. Was it because the probability was too low? After experiencing the fish baby's cuteness, although they were a bit exhausting, Li Yu still felt eager to give a second batch a try. Yesterday night, Jing Wang was considerably hard working. Because they had been traveling on the road for a very long time, the husband's sex life was so scarce it was pitiful. Suddenly accumulating so much, was it possible that he could have become pregnant? However, he was a system fish. If he were pregnant, the system should have given him a notification. Like last time, it made him choose between human form and fish form. This should be something he needed to select every time he became pregnant. Yesterday night, he didn't hear any notifications at all. Looks like the revolution wasn't successful yet. Comrade Jing Wang still needed to work hard. Li Yu swept his eyes over the hubby's waist, gaze burning bright. 
Ye Ching Huan was still blabbering onward non-stop. Jing Wan couldn't take it anymore and still ended up ordering Wang Shi to drag him outside and handing him two heavy red pouches in the process. Ye Ching Huan held the red pouches looking extremely enlightened. Could it be, Tian Shi, are you feeling jealous that I have such an adorable daughter? Jing Wan. Not jealous, get lost. When Ye Ching Huan and the princess daughter reached one month old, the emperor gave her the title of Princess of Qing He. The emperor had never been miserly towards someone of the younger generation. Because the little princess was really too young, it was still not convenient to visit. Li Yu ran over and chatted with Ye Ching Huan for a while, promising that he was going to bring the boys to come celebrate on the little princess 100th day celebration. Ye Ching Huan specifically reminded Li Yu, don't forget to bring Xiao Yu and that rest of the little Xiao Yus. The princess has been thinking about your family's fish all this time. Li Yu, damn. He needed to multitask again. Li Yu hastily sent a plea for help towards Jing Wang. On the 100th day celebration, he needed to bring his fish sons and a pile of fish pillows, as well as turning into a real fish. He definitely won't be able to do all of that. It's best if Jing Wan could shield him a bit. Jing Wan coughed lightly and turned his face away, pretending he didn't see anything. Who let this Karpiao be in such a hurry to see some princess or baby girl? Li Yu. Li Yu's face turned bitter. His highness was fine just now, so why did he suddenly get angry? After Ye Ching Huan left, Luo Gong Gong immediately arrived right after, bringing along a string of rewards. It wasn't convenient for the emperor to reward Jing Wang but he also genuinely liked the four boys. Therefore, he bestowed all of the gifts to the children. Luo Gong Gong recited the list of gifts until his throat was practically smoking. Wang Shi thoughtfully brought him a cup of tea. Luo Gong Gong took a sip and then happily continued to recite loudly. Li Yu stood beside Jing Wang listening respectfully while secretly clicking his tongue in awe. Jewelry, bolts of silks, antiques, paintings and calligraphy were just a small sample of it. The gifts even contained bows and arrows, fine horses and classical texts of Confucius. The emperor clearly had the baby's future in the next dozen years well arranged. Most of the gifts were four copies of the same thing. Only the last bit was different. The emperor gave Du Bao a set of essentials for calligraphy and studying, as well as a jade scepter. Meanwhile, the other babies received two bags of gold ingots with safety and prosperity carved on the surface. It was obvious that the emperor was treating Du Bao differently. Jing Wang smiled and looked at Wang Shi. Wang Gong Gong immediately told Li Yu on his behalf, Princess Consort, the eldest young master is the heir. The rewards form him is supposed to be more generous. Li Yu nodded. He understood that the status of the eldest legitimate son was unique in ancient times but would the little fishes fight over this? Li Yu remembered back then when they were still little fishes, whenever he placed Si Bao on top of his head, the other tiny fishes would eat vinegar. Usually, Li Yu did his best to pay attention here. For example, Du Bao was much smarter than normal infants and very easily attracted people's attention. Meanwhile, Jing Wang liked to hold Si Bao a bit more. After Li Yu noticed this, he started to hold Er Bao and San Bao more to prevent them from being wronged. However, with the difference in gifts, how was he supposed to let the boys know about Du Bao's distinctness? If Jing Wang were only a Wang, Du Bao would only inherit his Wang position. If Jing Wang managed to ascend the throne in the future, then Du Bao would most likely become the crown prince. With one mere difference, everything changes. This was probably what the ordinary princes found most difficult to reconcile with. Because he had given birth to all of the fish babies, there was at least no distinction of being the legitimate sons against that of the concubine. Their seniority was also very vague. Li Yu gave birth to the fish eggs while he was sleeping. Therefore, he can't discern which fish egg came first. Jing Wang settled their sequence according to which tiny fish baby hatched first. Speaking from this logic, Du Bao may not actually be the real eldest son. 
would the other boys feel injustice because of this? Li Yu carefully observed for two days. The little fish babies still ate and slept like they were supposed to, without any hint of dissatisfaction. The only exception was on the day when they received the gifts, Da Bao was almost drowning in the saliva from the other boys' kisses. Li Yu made a conclusion from this that the fish babies were still too young. Even if they weren't the same as normal children and had once lived their lives as young fishes for a while, they still didn't understand such complicated things as power and status. Just let them have a happy childhood. Future matters can be discussed in the future. Their father Jing Wang haven't even ascended the throne yet. There's no need to worry about them just yet. Li Yu just calmly put away this matter when another unexpected thing happened. For some unknown reason, the fish babies started to throw tantrums collectively. Li Yu remembered that the last time tantrums happened, it was when they were weaned off milk. He didn't get it at all. Clearly after moving back to the imperial city, their living conditions became better. Shouldn't the babies be happier? In any case, Li Yu was happier himself. After returning, he heard Wang Gong Gong unintentionally saying that Jing Wang had stolen one of the duck roasting experts from the West Frontier's Quan Ju store and brought them back here. This plan to open another roast duck store in the Imperial City, wasn't it obviously just to make Li Yu happy? Li Yu was very much aware so he waited patiently for the day when Jing Wang would bring him to eat roast duck. Ah, how did he accidentally start thinking about food? Li Yu hastily wiped away his drool. He needed to feel concerned towards the fish babies right now. The fish babies moved back into the Jing estate without any issues. The first time they threw tantrums was the very next day, after Li Yu and Jing Wang had carried them to stroll around the estate. The Jing estate was the fish babies' home. What's wrong with showing them their own home? Li Yu pondered deeply from different angles. He discovered that the four fish babies had all of their faces facing the window, calling out at us, as if wanting to see something. Li Yu carried Si Bao over there. Outside of the window was an area of the enormous fish tank that Jing Wang had built for him. The pond was filled with flowing cerulean water. Ah! Want to swim? Si Bao raised his little chubby hand and pointed at the pond, looking back with tear-filled eyes at Fish Dad. Li Yu. Si Bao expressed his wish first but the other fish babies also pointed at the pond, calling out towards Fish Dad. The most sensible Da Bao called out in the loudest voice. So that was it? Li Yu finally understood why the fish babies weren't happy. The Jing estate had this huge fish tank yet the fish babies could only look at it and not swim. Of course they wouldn't be happy. It just happened that Jing Wang headed out to do some business, and was temporarily not inside the estate. Li Yu thought of a plan and asked Wang Shi to move over a large bathtub and filled it with plenty of appropriate temperature water inside, Li Yu undressed all of the fish babies, wrapped their lower half with small towels, hung a small segment of wood on their bodies and had them enter the water to swim holding the piece of wood. The four fish babies entered the water but even though they wanted to swim, they couldn't. They discovered that behind their little butts, there was no tail to swing. Terribly saddened, they all started to wail loudly. Li Yu didn't expect that they'd also cry after entering the water and hastily got in as well, staying together with the fish babies. Surrounding their fish dad closely like when they were still young fishes, the fish babies finally felt a bit better inside. Li Yu stayed in the bathtub for a while before recalling, how could bubbles be lacking at a time like this? Grabbing a dry towel, he casually wrapped it around what should be covered. The servants were already cleared away by him from this room, leaving only himself and the fish babies. He wasn't running around completely naked, so it should be okay right? Li Yu dashed out of the bathtub and got plenty of bath beans. These bath beans were the ancient version of soap. Li Yu crushed these bath beans and dissolved a portion inside a bamboo bucket. Then he bent an iron wire into a suitably sized circle. Preparations completed, Li Yu dashed back. Using the iron wire, he dipped it into the soapy water, puffed up his cheeks and blew towards the direction of the bathtub. 
his hard work and effort didn't go to waste. He really did manage to blow out a few huge, rainbow-colored bubbles. Do bao, air bao, san bao, si bao. Fish dad was blowing bubbles. The fish babies inside the bathtub instantly forgot about their frustrations over not having tails and scrambled over each other to chase the bubbles. Jing Wang originally went out to do his things but came back midway. He discovered that Xiao Yu had the door tightly shut and the servants all went elsewhere. Jing Wang curiously pushed open the door to take a look and immediately saw the towel wrapped Karpia running around back and forth, practically naked with his long slender legs flashing before his eyes. Jing Wang. So, Xiao Yu was bathing with the fish babies. Jing Wang recalled the fun he had with Xiao Yu inside a bathtub before. How could he miss this kind of thing? With a smile, Jing Wang also got in the bathtub. After resting without any worries in the estate for a total of three days, it became the day that the emperor had ordered them to enter the palace once again. Bright and early in the morning, head steward Luo had already sent people to the Jing estate to rush them. Li Yu changed the babies into bright red colored garments and tied bibs around their necks. The bibs were the colors of the tiny fish baby's original colors, the edges were embroidered with an intricate fish pattern. He and Jing Wang changed into clothing fitting for a Wang and his consort. The first time they had seen the emperor, they just returned so they didn't pay much attention to this detail. This time was much more formal. Jing Wang had a dragon pattern on his clothes. Li Yu was not lacking in his phoenix patterned robes either. However, in inconspicuous places like the collar and cuffs, a secret fish pattern was embroidered, which even complemented the other design. After the wedding had passed, Li Yu deeply felt that Jing Wang's skill in making obvious and inconspicuous public displays of affections had increased again. Even though this trip's main purpose was to pay a visit to Changchun Palace to pay respects to Empress Yao Hui, they still needed to see the emperor first. However, they didn't even make it to the main hall of Ganqing Palace when head steward Luo came up to greet them, telling them quietly that someone was seeing the emperor right now. Head steward Luo extended his thumb and pinky and made the hand gesture for six and said with a sigh, the emperor also didn't expect this. Normally he always entered the palace around noontime. This time, he came bright and early, and even brought his wife over. He probably came because of you, your highness. Head steward Luo was clearly warning Jing Wang. Li Yu felt thankful and saluted him lightly. This personal servant would often help put in a good word for Jing Wang. Since Jing Wang couldn't do it so he'll just give thanks in Jing Wang's place. What was that saying again? Husband and husband were considered as one. Luo Ruiz Hung hastily said no need but Li Yu already finished the gesture quickly. With a smile, Jing Wang rubbed him on the head. Whether it was the sixth prince or whoever, no one cared. Li Yu and Jing Wang still carried the boys into the palace. Mu Tian Xiao just happened to be speaking with the emperor, voice full of delight. As soon as this imperial son received the wondrous news, this prince came to inform you, imperial father. Mu Tian Xiao said with a smile. Li Yu only managed to hear a part of it, not knowing what the sixth prince was so happy about. However, even after the emperor finished listening to the entire thing, his response wasn't as enthusiastic as what the sixth prince had imagined. He only furrowed his brows and looked questioningly at the sixth prince's wife, who was standing by the sixth prince's side. The sixth prince's wife bashfully nodded her head. The emperor immediately ordered head steward Luo to bestow her a seat, letting the sixth prince's wife sit down and rest but didn't extend the same courtesies to the sixth prince. Mu Tian Xiao stood there by himself, looking rather awkward. We give our greetings to imperial father-in-law. Li Yu called out from the back. Da Bao already recognized grandpa and spread open both arms from very far away. Laughing as a string of gold beans fell from his mouth. Yeah yeah. Da Bao happily called out. The emperor comfortably replied with an AI and said happily, after not seeing him for three days, I feel like he's saying it even clearer. Li Yu. Dou Bao isn't, Dou Bao hasn't. Don't think such nonsense, 
Your Majesty. The Emperor still picked up Da Bao and placed him on his knee. Mu Tian Xiao opened his eyes wide, incredulously. When had the Emperor been so affectionate with any of his grandsons? Da Bao pulled out a brush from his little garment. This was something that Da Bao had insisted on bringing before they left. It was a gift that the Emperor gave him a few days ago. Kair is so smart. Do you want to learn to write? Let Grandpa teach you how to hold the brush. As the Emperor spoke, he held Da Bao's little chubby hand with all smiles. Li Yu couldn't watch the spectacle. Da Bao needed to close both hands together to hold the shaft of the brush. Moreover, this brush was almost as tall as him. How was he supposed to write? However, since the Emperor felt like he could, then he would. The Emperor even started to guide Da Bao enthusiastically. At the same time, Da Bao was also making a serious expression and listening extremely carefully. After Da Bao messily scribbled a rice character again, the Emperor grinned so widely, he couldn't even close his mouth. Li Yu deeply felt like the Emperor had fallen under Da Bao's bewitchment. Although the Emperor didn't hold the other babies together again, he still individually squeezed Er Bao and San Bao's small tender hands and then happily got drool on all over his face by Si Bao. The Emperor laughed open-heartedly. The sixth prince stared maliciously at Da Bao, who was sitting in the Emperor's arms and couldn't resist saying, Father, Su Yun also. As the Emperor played with Da Bao, he said coolly without even lifting his head, If she's pregnant, then take care of her well. No need to run over in person to inform Zhen. Zhen will send an imperial physician over to check her daily. At this time, the emperor was already too lazy to conceal his dissatisfaction towards the sixth prince. His wife's pregnancy was originally a happy news. When the emperor had learned of it, he was also very delighted at first. However, the sixth prince was being too deliberate with this and actually dragged his wife over to report the news. Who would make a woman not even a month pregnant run around kneeling and kowtowing everywhere to spread this news? The sixth prince's decision, to say it nicely would be that as a first-time father, he didn't know any better, but bluntly, he was obviously using his offspring to make a good impression in front of the emperor, not caring at all about the little life inside his wife's womb. Combining this with the timing that the sixth prince chose to enter the imperial palace, how could the emperor not understand what the sixth prince was trying to do? Da Bao was clearly the smartest. So, what if he gets a bit more attention and love? The emperor thought coldly. Your child's not even born yet, what favoritism are you vying for? End chapter. The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Petfish Transmigration Chapter 107 Mu Tian Xiao perceived the emperor's cold attitude and resentfully asked to be excused, pulling his wife out of the palace. The sixth prince's wife, Liang Suyun, still wanted to take a look at Jing Wang's children some more. The elders had a saying that after becoming pregnant, look at little boys more would most likely make the unborn child a son. Lady Liang knew that since her husband was a prince, he must have wished she had a boy. Lady Liang wasn't very willing to leave but Mu Tian Xiao pulled her with great strength. Lady Liang was practically dragged outside. Inside Ganqing Palace, Lady Liang wasn't able to directly argue with the sixth prince for the sake of his reputation. Outside of the palace, she rubbed her wrists furiously and complained quietly for a bit. Before Lady Liang got married, she was very pampered by her parents and had never suffered this kind of injustice before. After marrying the sixth prince, Mu Tian Xiao treated her very meticulously, never showing any hint of anger in front of her. How come now that she's with a child, he would instead treat her so roughly? Mu Tian Xiao's face was dark and thinking about some unknown thing. After Lady Liang finished complaining, he finally came to his senses and recovered his usual gentle and thoughtful appearance. He said apologetically, Forgive me my lady. This prince was just too happy and temporarily forgot about your health. Mu Tian Xiao was good at lying and concealing his emotions. For a moment, Lady Liang even thought that it was her who had made a mistake. 
Lady Liang still wanted to live peacefully with him. Therefore, she said with a smile, I'm very well. You don't need to be so nervous. Just now I was thinking, if I can have a child like Jing Wang's heir, that'd be pretty good. Mu Tian Xiao also recalled the boy that the emperor held in his arms and gave a strange smile, it would indeed be pretty good. After learning that Lady Liang was pregnant, Mu Tian Xiao was originally very happy. This meant that he was about to have what Jing Wang had as well. This child was like a timely reign for him. Originally he was worrying over how to seamlessly seize back the emperor's attention. He heard that Jing Wang's family just returned to the imperial capital, the emperor had already bestowed Jing Wang's children plenty of things. Mu Tian Xiao thought that because the emperor was getting on in age, naturally he liked his grandchildren more. If he could report the news of Lady Liang's pregnancy to the emperor as soon as possible, the emperor would no longer have only Jing Wang's children in his eyes anymore. Mu Tian Xiao was very hopeful. Yet the emperor treated him and treated his future offspring, so very indifferently. What was even more unacceptable to him was the emperor's overly enthusiastic attitude towards Jing Wang's eldest. He was only a little tiny thing yet the emperor held him on his knees. Mu Tian Xiao detested him secretly. He had known all this time that the emperor didn't like him because his birth mother, concubine Zhang was Empress Xiao Hui's maid. As far as he could remember, for a long period of time the emperor did not summon to see his birth mother. His mother had been the lowest ranked concubine for quite a while, until he became an adult. His mother finally rose in ranks. The emperor would finally visit Yangfu Palace occasionally for a while, which counted as showing him a bit of face. Before he had thought that although the emperor didn't like him, at least the emperor would like his child. During New Year's or other festivals, the emperor would always order people to bring even the Marquis of Ping and the Marquis of An's children into the palace for him to see them. Jing Wang's eldest just appeared and the emperor was already holding him on his knees. So why did the emperor solely act so indifferent towards his own child? This was indicating that in the emperor's heart, he was still inferior to Jing Wang, and also, even inferior to the one second prince and third prince. Even if he brought his wife in person to report the good news, it was useless. The emperor didn't even mention wanting to give him a new assignment. It's not like he would only stay with Lady Liang to help her throughout her pregnancy the entire time, right? Mu Tian Xiao hated on the emperor once more. Nevertheless, although this trip was not quite how he expected, it wasn't completely without gains. The reason why he brought Lady Liang into the palace in a hurry was also because he heard that Jing Wang and his entire family was going to enter the palace today. Mu Tian Xiao also wanted to take this chance to take a look at Jing Wang's children. The loyal subordinate that he had sent to the West Frontier still did not reply. Mu Tian Xiao had already given up on waiting, feeling like this subordinate was definitely gone. He most likely discovered something and was silenced by Jing Wang. However, Mu Tian Xiao was unable to obtain the specific reasoning for this. He already didn't have much help left. Therefore, he can only seize every single opportunity to see and verify things himself. Fortunately, he managed to enter the palace. Although his child was unfavored, he discovered one of Jing Wang's secrets. Jing Wang's sons didn't actually look like Jing Wang. The Emperor and Luo Ruiz Hung both said that they looked extremely similar to Jing Wang. However, Mu Tian Xiao had eyes himself, he wasn't blind. Those were only words of courtesy. Because Mu Tian Xiao was several years younger than Jing Wang, Mu Tian Xiao didn't actually know how Jing Wang looked in his youth. The more he thought about this, the deeper down the spiral he went, and the more reasonable he felt. Regardless of whether the children were really born from a male princess consort or not, even the imperial physician said that Jing Wang's offspring would most likely inherit Jing Wang's disability. However, the truth that Mu Tian Xiao saw was, the four little children were all normal. None of them were mute, and they didn't look like Jing Wang at all. This was all very questionable. 
no need to mention that the imperial physician that the emperor sent would definitely verify the children's identities. The western frontier was Jing Wang's territory. In there, it wasn't impossible for Jing Wang to get the result how he wanted it. That's right. It must be so. Jing Wang also know that his disability was a disadvantage for him. However, if he had healthy children, his disability wouldn't be so important anymore. Jing Wang intended to fight for the throne, therefore, he was extremely likely to take a gamble and disguise children that weren't his as his own. As for pretending that a male princess consort could bear children. Mu Tian Xiao was inclined to believe that this was a diversionary tactic, or even more so, he had an outrageous thought. One of the four children really did look very much like that male princess consort. Could it be possible that the healthy children were actually the offspring of the male princess consort and some woman, and they were just simply placed under Jing Wang's name? If this were true, then Jing Wang was really audacious. Mu Tian Xiao deeply believed that he discovered Jing Wang's weakness here. The next step, then, was for him to exploit this point and come up with a good scheme to strike at Jing Wang. The emperor was too biased, however, if he learned that this grandson that he so favored wasn't actually Jing Wang's, then what? Mu Tian Xiao was already itching to see the emperor's response. Falsifying royal bloodlines, even for the son of Empress Xiao Hui would most likely unable to recover from this. However, what if he was wrong? Would he get burned instead? No. As long as he can make certain to change them to no relations, then that will suffice. When his train of thought reached this point, Mu Tian Xiao felt like the humiliation that he suffered just now no longer meant anything. In a better mood, he said with a smile, I also think the little heir is very interesting. If there's a chance in the future, it'd be good to be able to see him again. Liang Suyun didn't know what he was thinking. She just felt like the sixth prince seemed to like little children. On Li Yu's side, after seeing the emperor and waiting for the emperor to finish holding Da Bao, they finally brought the children over to Changchun Palace. He came to Changchun Palace once in fish form. But in human form, as the princess consort, this was his first time. Li Yu was extremely cautious, afraid to reveal his familiarity with Changchun Palace and make people suspicious. This was the imperial palace after all. Don't worry Jing Wang gently patted the back of his hand, wanting him to not be too nervous. Ever since they entered the imperial palace, Jing Wang had been leading him the entire time, not even leaving him half a step. Li Yu followed comfortably by Jing Wang's side. The people of Changchun Palace already knew that they were coming one step ahead. Although the memorial cloths for the deceased Empress Yao Hui were still present, the front hall was already cleaned up nicely with candles already burning. Jing Wang still lit up his three incense sticks. The family of six kowtowed before the memorial tablet of Empress Yao Hui. This circumstance and scenery made Li Yu recall the scene he saw inside the system regarding Jing Wang as an infant, about the secret in Changchun Palace. He still hadn't figured out this secret yet. Then, he had the fish babies and was absorbed in raising the boys. So, he didn't think about it at all. Why not use this opportunity to take a tour around Changchun Palace? Perhaps he might be able to find that room and discover some clues. He felt like this was a pretty good idea. Wang Shi found two chairs for Jing Wang and Li Yu. Li Yu and Jing Wang just sat down when Si Bao suddenly opened his little round eyes wide, pointed towards an area and called out loudly. Li Yu followed his chubby hand and looked. A small box was placed on top of an eight-drawer dresser. Something was on top of the box, which looked very much like a gold-colored embroidered pouch. Li Yu felt it was somewhat strange. How come he didn't see this the last time he came here? However, Changchun Palace did get cleaned up. Perhaps this was placed somewhere else before but now, the servants brought it out. Jing Wang indicated with his eyes. Wang Shi followed his order and went to investigate. A moment later, he brought over a rather old-looking cloth tiger doll. Ah! Tiger! 
This cloth tiger doll attracted all of the boys' attention. The children all started to yell. They had plenty of toys. Naturally they couldn't be without the cloth tiger doll. The boys wanted the cloth tiger doll but how could Wang Shi give it to them directly? First, he tested it with a silver needle. Then, he brushed off the dust on top and used a handkerchief to wipe it down several times. Finally, he handed it over to Jing Wang. Only with Jing Wang's approval could the cloth tiger doll be given to the little masters. Jing Wang accepted the cloth tiger and looked it over, actually looking rather fond. Li Yu saw the middle-aged woman sewing the cloth tiger doll in the memory. Inside Cheng An Palace, he also saw a cloth tiger inside Empress Yao Hui's room. Now another one has appeared here. Where did this cloth tiger doll came from? Tian Shi, do you have any impression of this? Li Yu asked. Jing Wang nodded his head, guiding Li Yu to look at the needle stitches at the tiger's tail part. So the tail was actually reattached after being ripped off. This is, Li Yu laughed. Did you play with this before in your childhood? Empress Yao Hui liked to make cloth tiger dolls for her sons. Jing Wang definitely had one. His guess was correct. Jing Wang nodded his head again. Li Yu recalled that secret again and said probingly, then. Do you have any impression of a about 30 years old wet nurse you had when you were younger? Jing Wang slowly shook his head. This wasn't the first time Li Yu had asked this. He wasn't too hopeful anyways. In the memory of the secret, Jing Wang was still laying in swaddling clothes, looking even smaller than the boys. How could he remember this? At the same time, Wang Shi also didn't know anything. Li Yu made inquiries before. Wang Shi only arrived by Jing Wang's side after Empress Yao Hui had passed away. Wang Gong Gong did know of a wet nurse that once fed Jing Wang before. However, this wet nurse was tall and strong, extremely robust, and didn't match the one in the memory. However, considering a prince very likely had many wet nurses, Li Yu deduced that the one in the memory was probably only one of many. Unfortunately, neither Wang Shi nor the other wet nurse knew her. Don't tell him, he had to go ask head steward Luo. Pondering back and forth, Li Yu only had this one person to ask. However, would head steward Luo help him? Jing Wang looked over the cloth tiger doll himself, then squeezed it a bit. Feeling like it was fine, he placed it into Si Bao's hands. Si Bao held the cloth tiger that his father Jing Wang gave him, yelling happily. However, the other three babies quickly turned their attention to him. Du Bao, Er Bao, San Bao, Ah, want tiger doll, too. Si Bao refused. This was the toy that their father Jing Wang gave to him. It could only belong to one fish, Si Bao. Si Bao stuffed the cloth tiger doll under his elbow. He could already roll around and sit, just not walk. Immediately, he hugged the cloth tiger doll and started rolling, planning to run away. Du Bao, Er Bao, and San Bao hastily used their round chubby bodies to block Si Bao together. When Si Bao stopped rolling, Er Bao grabbed the tail of the cloth tiger. Du Bao and San Bao each grabbed one of the cloth tiger's feet. Si Bao clenched tightly to the tiger's head, none of them were willing to let go. Not long after the deadlock, the sound of ripping could be heard. The cloth tiger doll was already pretty old and was already broken once. It was very easily ripped apart by the children. Du Bao, Er Bao, and San Bao were dumbfounded and immediately let go of the broken cloth tiger doll. Si Bao grabbed the broken tiger doll, scrunched up his face, wanting to cry. Li Yu was almost dying of laughter because of these boys and hastily walked forward to hug Si Bao. Si Bao buried his head in Fish Dad's embrace, sobbing tragically. Li Yu stroked his back and coaxed him softly. Then, he went to look at the cloth tiger doll in Si Bao's hands. The tiger's condition was really bad. Li Yu secretly stole a glance at Jing Wang. Jing Wang was also smiling, instead of being angry. Li Yu took the cloth tiger doll from Si Bao and made a show of examining it a bit. 
Then he said softly, Si Bao, don't cry. We'll sew it together and it'll be the same as before. Si Bao blinked his teary eyes. Li Yu showed him what sewing meant and opened the cloth tiger doll. Suddenly, he saw that inside the cloth tiger doll, there were two characters sewn there, Pulu. Li Yu's heart skipped. Why would these characters be sewn inside? This cloth tiger doll was Jing Wang's childhood toy, therefore, it can't be a token of affection or anything like that. Instead, it was more like a tag on the back of modern clothes. Was it possible that the characters were a person's name? The person who made the cloth tiger doll? Li Yu was still thinking, Si Bao was impatient from waiting for him and started to tug at his sleeve. Li Yu returned from his thoughts and continued to coax Si Bao. A moment later, Si Bao laid in Fish Dad's arm and fell asleep with teardrops on his eyelashes. He finally calmed down. Next, Li Yu seized the opportunity to strike while the iron was hot, and lectured the troublemaking fish babies on what being kind to friends and respectful towards brothers meant. Da Bao understood that he was wrong and sat up straight, cupping his hands together for mercy like an adult. Air Bao and San Bao looked at each other and then pulled down each other's little pants. Prostrating on the floor and revealing their little butts, they indicated for Fish Dad to hit the other boy. Li Yu. End chapter.